Hi, my name is Kalyan Verma. In this video, I'm going to show you how the filtered rows option works for selector components in Excel CS. And also, I'm going to show you how the source data component works in Excel CS 2008. First, let's examine the underlying Excel data. So let's quickly switch to the spreadsheet option. I have uh, the quantity of uh, items purchased uh, on uh, specific dates. Uh, what we're trying to do is using the filter rows option, uh, get the rows for a selected item into the yellow cells here. We can achieve this uh, by, by using the filter rows options for any of the selector, op selector components. So let's go back to the workspace mode. And uh, for this uh, example, we're gonna use a radio button. Let's drag and drop a radio button component onto the canvas and quickly bind it to bind the labels to the item column. And now if you observe, I can see my items repeated. However, under the insertion type, when I select filtered rows, it will only select the unique items from the entire data. So in this case, I have five items. It has removed the duplicate uh, items. Now my source data is my entire data set here. And my destination would be the colored yellow cells. So what's, what's gonna happen is when I select an item from the radio button, when I pick an item from the radio button, it's gonna insert the rows related to that item into the yellow cells. So in this case, in order to test this, we're gonna use a column chart. Uh, since it's dates, date of purchase, and you want to see a trend, let's use a line chart. And let's give it a title of uh, date of purchase and the subtitle of the item, which is gonna be inserted in the third column. And let's add a series. Let's give the series name as the item again. And the values as the quantity, which is gonna be inserted in the column G. And the labels as the dates. Let's go ahead and preview this and see what happens. Now, if you see, uh, I've selected the keyboard. I see the keyboard values for uh, given dates. If I switch to desktop, laptop, phone, and monitor, you see the line chart changing. You have some empty space at the end of the line chart. That's because we haven't ignored the blank cells. So let's go ahead and go do that. Let's do it under behavior, ignore blank cells in series and in values. And let's preview it again. Now you don't see those blank cells at the end of the line chart and everything works smooth. Now, basically what's happening is when I selected keyboard, all the rows which has keyboard under the item are inserted into the yellow cells and the chart is picking it from the yellow cells. Now, there is one other component which you can use in Excelsius, uh, which is not that widely used. However, uh, it's worth a mention. It's under other components called the source data component. It, it's almost uh, like a selector component. However, uh, you won't see it in, in the runtime. It's only there for the design time. In this example, uh, I have a set of data on the right, which has the quantity totals for all the items specified. And uh, if I want to show these as a, as a gauge value, I can use the source data button. I can achieve that using a VLOOKUP formula also, but in this example, just to show you the functionality of the source data button, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop in a source data button and a gauge for display. So gauge is under the single value components. Let's drag and drop a gauge and bind it to the quantity insert. 
before that let's uh, uh, bind the source data component so the insertion type here I'm gonna select as row select my source data as the item and quantity totals and the destination as the yellow cells on the top and the interesting fact to note is under behavior you can always give an index number I'm gonna explain this in details I'm gonna give an index number of L2 what's in L2 is nothing but it's a basic VLOOKUP formula whatever item is selected pick the index number from column L and put it in um, L2 so this is what we have in uh, for, as an index so for example if I selected keyboard it's gonna put 0 and select the keyboard 204 in my yellow cells so let's go ahead and see uh, what happens before that let's give our gauge a title of the item name which is going to be inserted and let's change the position of the title to bottom center as you observe I've just dragged and dropped the source data button into the center of the chart so in runtime it should not appear so let's do a preview so the source data button is gone and I see my gauge populating here as I change the values so you, this is how you can use the filtered rows option for selector components. Many of the selector components have the filtered rows option and also the source data button uh, with which you can run a different set of data. Thanks for watching.